Gandhi's early activism and challenges, 1895 to 1902. One day, a poor Indian farm worker called Balasundaram came to Gandhi's office. Balasundaram was crying. He had been beaten by his rich employer. His teeth were broken and his mouth was bleeding. It was always a mystery to Gandhi that people could injure other human beings. Gandhi sent Balasundaram to a doctor and took the doctor's report to court. Gandhi managed to persuade the court to move Balasundaram to another employer. Because he was willing to help then one, many poor farm workers came to Gandhi and news of his work reached India. In 1896, Gandhi sailed to India to fetch his family. After a voyage of 24 days, he arrived in Calcutta, now called Kolkata, the capital of the British government in India. He traveled 2,000 kilometers by train across India to his family in Rajkot. But although Gandhi was happy to see his family, he did not spend all his time with them. He arranged meetings in Bombay, Calcutta, Pune, now called Pune, and Madras, now called Chennai, in order to speak to people about the conditions of Indians in South Africa. Indian newspapers wrote about Gandhi and these meetings. While he was staying in Raikot, there was great fear that a serious disease would come to the city from Bombay. Gandhi joined a group which visited the very poorest parts of Rajkot. He was always very interested in preventing disease and preferred the work of a nurse to the work of a lawyer. His sister's husband was very ill at this time and Gandhi brought him to his house where he could look after him. But Gandhi was only in India for a few months before Abdullah Sheth asked him to return to South Africa. This time, Gandhi traveled with Castor and their two sons. They sailed from Bombay on one of Abdullah Sheth's ships and arrived in Durban in December 1896. Many of the white people of Durban had heard about the meetings which Gandhi had organized in India. These meetings had made South Africa unpopular in India, and so the people of Durban did not want Gandhi to return to the city. The passengers were prevented from leaving the ship. They were kept on the ship for 23 days, but at last they were allowed to leave. Gandhi was recognized, and a crowd of young white men began to follow him and to throw stones at him. They hit him and kicked him and pulled off his turban. The brave wife of the police chief was passing in the street, and she came up to Gandhi. The crowd stepped back because they did not want to hurt a woman, and soon the police arrived. Gandhi was taken to a friend's house where he was looked after. Gandhi refused to take the young men to court for their violence against him, and this made some of the white people feel ashamed. For the next few years, Gandhi lived with his family in a pleasant house near the beach. Two more sons were born, Ramdas in 1898 and Devadas in 1900. Gandhi continued to work for the Indians and to help the poor farm workers. Every day he also worked as a nurse in a small hospital, giving medicine to sick workers. Two groups of white people lived in South Africa, those from Britain who spoke English and those from Holland who were known as Africaners and spoke Africans, a kind of Dutch. The British and the Africaners hated each other, and when gold was discovered in the Africaner province of Transvaal in 1899, a war started between them. Gandhi decided to help the British. At that time, he believed that the British Empire was a good government. He called together a group of more than 1,000 Indians to help care for soldiers who were wounded during the war. This group was called the Ambulance Corps, and for six weeks, the group carried the dead and wounded to safety, sometimes for distances of more than 30 kilometers. In Natal and in England, newspapers reported the work of Gandhi's Ambulance Corps. After the war, Gandhi believed that his work in South Africa was over, and he went back to India with his family. He went to Calcutta for the yearly meeting of the Indian National Congress and began to meet other Indian leaders. He stayed with Gopal Gokhale, an important leader, who thought that Gandhi would soon be a leader in India. At the Congress meeting, Gandhi spoke for a few minutes about South Africa. He helped in one of the offices, and he also helped some untouchables with the dirty job of cleaning the toilets. After the Indian National Congress meeting, Gandhi went back to Rajkot by train, stopping at several cities in order to learn more about India. The first railways were built in India in 1853, and by 1880, there were 14,500 kilometers of railway across India. Gandhi decided to travel as a third-class passenger. The third-class compartments were dirty and noisy. 
and Gandhi began to experience the difficulties that poor people lived with in India. Gokhale wanted Gandhi to work with him in Bombay, but Gandhi remembered that he had failed in Bombay in 1894, and so he opened a law office in Rajkot. Gandhi was earning enough money for a comfortable life, and he and his family enjoyed living in Rajkot. But in November 1902, Gandhi received this message from South Africa. Mr. Chamberlain is expected here. Please return immediately. So Gandhi left his wife and his four sons and returned to South Africa. He had been in India for only one year, 